got Mitchy here as well. Hopefully everyone's all well. We are live here down Adelaide Airport. Just down here. That's the terminal to get into the car park. Got the Atura Hotel. Then also if you head back that way, that's going down towards Ikea where you generally come into the airport. Yeah, we're just on the city side of the main terminal, yeah. just outside of the main entrance of Atura. Uh, this is where they have built the new uh, Vickers Vimy display. Unfortunately, it's not overly well advertised. You really do have to sort of go searching for it, but when you find it, it's certainly worth your uh, worth the effort because it's, pretty, it's something pretty special inside and we can't wait to uh, show it to you. That's it. Now, but, um, I'm not going to be able to read all the chats too well. We'll give it a go a bit later on. But a little bit of a statue of uh, the guys who flew the Vickers Vimy uh, on the far left, Captain Sir Ross Smith. Uh, Lieutenant Sir Keith Smith was uh, on the second on the left. Uh, the third one was Lieutenant Jay Bennett. And then the one on the, on the right-hand side was Lieutenant W. Shears. All part of the Vickers Vimy crew. We can walk over this way a little bit. We can see the path that they took. <clears throat> don't know how close I can get. Started off in England at Hounslow, 1919. Went to Lyon, 12th of November. To Pisa, the 13th of November. To Rome, on the 15th of November. Toronto, on the 16th. Crete, on the 17th. To Cairo, on the 18th. Das uh, Damascus, on the 19th. Ramadi on the 20th, Basra on the 21st, Bandar Abbas on the 23rd, Karachi on the 24th, I'm running out of space here, went to Delhi, Alabad, Calcutta, uh, Akyab, Rangoon, Bangkok, Singora, Singapore, Kalajati, and so many more, all the way until they got to Darwin, Melbourne, then they backtracked and they came to Adelaide. There you go, a little bit of the Vickers Vimy, which is pretty cool. 27 days, apparently. Yeah. And when you see the plane itself, you're going to wonder how the hell did they do that. Know, yes. Because it's pretty <laughs> riggedy. But anyway. It's a very long, very long trip for a plane that can only do about 180 miles an hour. <laughs> Shall we go inside and have a look? We will. Uh, working on it. Thank you very much for joining Runway 05. Very much appreciate your support. A little bit of a different kind of stream today. This is all handheld, so it's going to be a little bit bumpy. I do apologise. Just to give a little bit more perspective on where we are, just through those doors there, we can straight into the international uh, arrivals. Oh, that's a bit of a zoom there. <laughs> Whoops. So you're on the international arrivals end of the terminal and you're we are on the city side uh, of the airport just here. behind the Atura hotel just just yeah basically just behind Atura right in front of their main entrance and uh basically the display opens from 8 a.m uh, i think every day and um yeah if you're ever on the airport down the airport i think this is very much a way to uh, kill a very uh an impressive half hour or so. Absolutely. A little bit of backstory is that this uh, this exhibit used to be in its own separate building in the uh, down towards the control tower in the long term car park. Well, uh, no, the staff where it is now. This used to be the area when the old terminal was built, but then they repurposed it into a car park, which it is now. Uh, but they've actually moved it since they redeveloped the terminal only a couple of years ago. So this is actually my first time having a look at the plane since they've remodeled. Beautiful. A lot of people in the chat, Miles Hires in the chat. Good morning to you, Scott Grimswood, Shirley Burton as well. Ali's in there as well. Ross Andrews. There you go. Let's go through some of the chat here. Maeve is in the chat. Johnny's Aviation. All right, shall we go in? Shall we? This is the OG Vickers Vimy. You can lead. Let's go in and have a look. This is exciting. We're walking through the door. Hopefully we don't get stuck. I think we got stuck. We're still moving. There we go. Oh, wow. There it is. The original Vickers Vimy. Oh, 
All right, we'll walk around a little bit to the side. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Bit of information here. We'll read some of that information a little bit later on. We'll keep on going for a bit of a walk around here. Just a massive wing there. Now this is all original. You see the place that we're working with. Absolutely massive. It's all indoors, it's all temperature controlled, I believe. It is. Yeah, no, uh, no UV can uh, get inside the roof, deteriorate the material or the wood. Did a little bit of research last night as well, and found out there's only two of these still flying in the world. Only two? This is one of them, so. Um, and this yeah. one's not very well flying, is it? <laughs> no, this one's not. But yeah, that's really awesome. And they actually dismantled the whole thing and rebuilt it in here to move it from the, uh, the old building. So it's pretty impressive. So the uh, propellers there. We'll walk around a bit further. The cool thing about this is they've got a mirror right above so you can actually see into the cockpit. Sorry about the shakiness. Uh, aircraft Aviation says it looks like my old washing machine. <laughs> That's where they used to sit to fly it. Yeah, it's very, uh, very impressive. Absolutely very crazy. Two, yeah. Uh, two Rolls Royce engines on it. Absolutely stunning. You can listen very closely. They're constantly playing sort of sounds of what the airplane actually sounds like in flight. There's always this engine hum in the background. You sort of see on the super screens around us imagery of the actual plane back in its heyday. Yeah. And some of the um, air footage that they shot on their uh, travels. It's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. You're right. <laughs> then we'll go through here. You can see a little bit of the uh, video playing in the background. Miles says, uh, free the Vimy, she wants to fly. <laughs> she does. I'd love to go up in it. The sensation of it. Fascinating to think that, you know, how fast technology has come. And only 50 years after this thing flew, we landed on the moon. So, uh, yeah. insane. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, incredible. But, um, We'll keep walking around a little bit. We'll take you upstairs as well, where there's another viewing platform. So you'll see us going into a lift. Fun times. These usually are a touch screen interactive, uh, but unfortunately they're not turned on. Either that or it's broken, one of the oh, two. We break it, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the other one's <laughs> Is there security even in that room watching you? No, these are, you can't really tell from here, but these are massive glass panels all the way around so there's no physical way that you can get into it yeah. so it's uh pretty well secure i mean if you really wanted to you could jump it but there's no way in hell that i'm going to do that i'm sure or promote that cameras watching yeah. oh yeah <laughs> yeah there's also a mezzanine level which uh, also has more artifacts of the uh, the journey yeah we'll have a, a good uh, look at yeah. should we head around there yeah for sure all right 
uh, promise and Mark, word today, our B-52 that launches the X-15 and the third uh, B-52 is to be produced now on display at the Pena Air and Space Museum in Tucson. So this is a great tour of yesteryear. Oh, Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Miles High says, give Mitch a boost over, let him sit in her. <laughs> so we'll quickly take you on a tour of of uh, all the lookout places, and then we'll come back and we'll read some of the history, yeah. which is... Uh, Charlie says, can you take us to Macca's, please? Uh -huh. Yeah, we can do that. We'll go for a walk to McDonald's afterwards. That's the answer, too. Yeah. <laughs> Call Mitch the Rocketeer. So that's the guys in the plane there. Just an amazing photo there. So beautiful. It's not a small plane either. Like, no, it's it is a, a big plane. Like, yeah, this is this is freaking massive. Yeah, it was originally designed to be a, a level one a bomber. Um, it, it never actually flew in the war. It wasn't developed till after war. Uh, so they ended up using it as a. Uh, Scientific and research plane, but um, but it's not a small plane when you no. compare it to other level one five planes. <laughs> you know, it I, is a size can, plane. Honestly, compare it to a, the size of maybe a Q three hundred or a Sub yeah. forty. Oh, easily. Yeah. Uh, wingspan uh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge wingspan. Uh, Pat, Patrick M says they had selfies back in nineteen nineteen. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, cool. All right, so over here they've got like a, a couch area and they've also got like a TV with music where they're playing. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's really cool. Look at this. The schematics of the... Uh... So they got schematics of the planes. A bit hard to see from here, but... All the schematics are on the windows of the plane. Maximum range is uh, 995 miles or 600 kilometers. Pretty impressive. So yeah, the heavy bomber was designed in 1917 by Vickers Vimy Limited and built at the Waybridge, Surrey, UK. Construction, wire-braced wooden airframe structure with cotton linen fabric covering. Uh, Rolls-Royce Eagle V3 aero engines and just everything's listed here. I can't go any lower than that, my back won't let me. But yeah, there's schematics everywhere of the engine. We're getting right up to the back of the tail here. We could literally, if the glass wasn't here, touch it. Yeah, that's like 40 centimetres from the glass. <laughs> they really uh, squeezed it in, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I think that's that space is uh, beautifully put together. It really is a museum grade oh, yeah. display. Yeah. Uh, working on it says thank you for the cool tour. 34L says this would literally be the best channel if we went, he got some Maccas and bought those things. <laughs> All right, so we're going up the lift. Get to the mezzanine level. Back rooms. Back The all right. Doors closing. <laughs> all right. So here we are, top level. Miles, what is Mac? Is another plane? <laughs> Absolutely amazing. There's the top of the wing. The tail. It's 
Uh, aircraft expeditions, I'll have to check it a bit later. I don't have access to it while I am on my phone. So, Mitch, yeah. do you have Discord on your phone? I do. Can you just check the mod chat? Aircraft expeditions trying to chat to us. It's fascinating to think that I used to, um, they used to, to carry up to six people, four of them made the journey, and they used to sleep in that thing as yeah. well, on the long journeys as well. Uh, unbelievable. You know, the whole fuselage is uh, hollow, and they have access to pretty much the entire The whole lot, yeah. yeah that's it. That's where we walked in over there. Pretty fancy. All right, we'll quickly go over here. We'll have a look at some of the artifacts. One of the original suits. Constructed at Adelaide Airport, opening in April 1990. Yeah. Since 1998, Adelaide Airport has been responsible for the ongoing care and conservation of the Vimy. 100 years after the 1919 flight, the South Australian Commonwealth Government's Love of the Adelaide Airport announced joint funding to... There you go. That's a Marmacuda replica. Replica, sorry. Uh, Ross Smith bought along a good luck mascot named Mum. Marmaduke which travelled behind the front cockpit of the Vickers during its flight to Australia. Uh, unfortunately, the original one was damaged by the enthusiastic crowd at Darwin and later had its head stolen while under repair. So there you go. This is the old uh, camera owned by Sir Keith Smith. Uh, it's a Kodak. Um, it was offered as a thousand pound prize for the best photograph and the prize was won by Sir Keith Smith. Um, he carried this and recorded many images which are used here in the exhibition as well, which is pretty cool. <laughs> That's the star, uh, the KBE star given to Sir Keith Smith. They, beca they became Knights uh, Commanders of the Order of Britain, Empire in December of 1919. Uh, they were recorded on saying, what on earth will Mother say to having us two knights knocking about this place? That's what they said apparently. <laughs> That is the RFC wing, uh, Brevet Sir Keith Smith. Bit hard to see. Come down this way. That's a souvenir plate from Sir Keith Smith. That's a Ross Smith, sorry. A little lapel badge. Don't know if I can zoom in on that. Maybe just a little bit. And a cigarette case, which was uh, Sir Keith Smith's as well, which is pretty cool. Now that there's a souvenir booklet published in the early 1920s by Angus and Robertson. Uh, the souvenir booklet featured 27 aerial photographs of Sydney and regional New South Wales, taken from the Vimy by Frank Hurley. Uh, on its journey southland, sorry, southwards from Darwin, it included a short description of the flight to Australia written by Sir Ross Smith as well. Which is pretty cool. This is the aeroplane race game. Uh, the Vimy's arrival generated many souvenir items to capitalise on the popularity of Roth. Uh, Ross and Keith Smith. Now the aeroplane race game was registered to copyright uh, in 1920 and it looked forward to the international air travel crossing oceans and continents. Look how old that map is in Japanese Empire and yeah. no, you know, no Korea and the Russian Empire as well. Which is, which is an old map. Bombay <laughs> instead of Mumbai. Yeah, absolutely crazy. All right, so we'll come over this way. We've got a big screen here where they play part of the display. The Vimy joined the treasures of the Australian War Museum in Melbourne and Sydney before becoming an exhibit at the Australian War Memorial. Actually, 
watch a little bit longer or show you the uh, the old there's the old display. That's the old display right there. Here we go. This is how they removed it from its old location. And then they took it to its new location. Took a lot of work just to lift it. Many of the names of well wishers who signed their names on the Vimy have been recorded, including perhaps the earliest surviving name, Moore, from Vickers, who might have been one of the women who worked at the Vickers factory to replace the Vimy's cabinet before the flight began. With the painstaking That's how they moved it out. Into the new part. There you go. And that's how they set it up for over here, which we see right behind us. Uh, Air Bar, uh, sorry, Aircraft Expedition says that was a real B-52, the original. It was. <laughs> Just absolutely amazing. Pity about the pole there, but... I don't know how I feel just sitting one foot away from a propeller. Like the propellers are right at head level. Yeah. In the cockpit there. You know, they're literally a foot either side of your head are propellers. Yeah. Uh, yeah it must have been a fascinating thing. Even all the flight control links as well. Yeah. Elevators and the rudder are all physical. Yeah. Obviously, but they're all exposed. Yeah. So you can see the level of redundancy with the half too, but even then, yeah, they're pretty exposed. All of the uh, wire, it doesn't go through the internal fuselage, it goes across the outside. Yeah, external exactly. fuselage. Exactly, it run, actually runs across the outside. And it's the same with the, because the biplane has the, the, uh, the physical link between the upper wing and the lower wing. Yeah. Uh, the you can see all the wires, you can see everything. See, there's all the wires. You can see the uh, Looks like it has flaps. It says it flaps. Oh, yep. Or was that just the camera and the leash? No, I think they could pull it up and down. I'm pretty sure. At least on at least on the far tips anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Well they're ailerons, but um I think yeah, I'm trying to figure out that the the middle section <clears throat> there it looks like it's <laughs> I don't know if that's just a camera and the wing of French has one. Aircraft expedition says where are the rocket guns? <laughs> and the fifty caliber guns. Uh, probably one of these probably had that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just a beautiful view which they've set up here. Here's one of those um, interactive displays that there's normally another couple downstairs. They're not turned on, unfortunately, but this is the type of thing if you want to get a little bit of extra information. Comparison to a 787. Yeah, it doesn't want to wait. There we go. Yeah, so there you go. Very cool. Shall we head back down? No, it's really good. Really well put together place. Yeah. Yeah, very impressive. 
Yeah, let's uh, keep the chat on topic about the Vimy today. All right, we're going to head back down. Very impressive. I never actually went to, I mean, I went to the old display many times, but I never actually went inside. Yeah. I kind of wish I did. But uh, we really couldn't go inside of it. It was just, it was in a box. Yeah, yeah, it just a glass box. Can't kind of walk around it. Yeah, yeah. That's a must. All right, back to the music. <laughs> no, we lost connection in the lift. Metal. Last leg to Adelaide. Just a lot of cool information here. Yeah, ten thousand pound prize. All right, guys, let's uh, stop knocking on the mods, please. Let's uh, keep it civil in here. We won't take that. Otherwise, we will start removing. Uh, how long and far was the trip? Uh, it was 27 days, I think we said. It took 27 days uh, to get from England uh, to Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, which is pretty amazing I was just reading here it sort of says most planes of the day only had a flight you know, overhaul a peak time period of a hundred hours whereas they obviously um, pushed this thing a lot further than that yeah um, would have been fascinating for the people to see it a lot of people probably never even saw an airplane yeah when it got here. Um, there you go there's uh, some of the guys there Bit hard to see because of the light, I do apologise, but... Celebrating when they made it. How many refuelling stops? Gee, I have no idea. I don't think they've recorded that here. Well, well they might have like, They have a total flight range of uh, about 1,600 kilometres, but I, I doubt really that uh, they would have pushed it quite that far. Yeah. Um. All right, so there's the wingspan there. Just absolutely amazing. Right, we'll walk around this way. We got more artifacts. Well, not artifacts, but information around here. Absolutely amazing aircraft. So it was actually built in 1919 as a Vicky as a Vimy bomber. So there you go, the registration G-E-A-O-U, which the Cree joked around, stood for God help all of us. 
Vickers allocated about 20 female fabric workers from their Weybridge factory to work alongside Bennett and Shears to replace the cotton fabric covering the airframe using screws instead of tacks for the extra strength. An additional 516 gallons of fuel capacity was extended the range of the Vimy which was crammed full of spare parts as well. That's crazy. Look at that, that's another one. Is this the same one or is this another, oh, this is another one. That one. Yeah, that's, that's that's one of the different museums. Yeah, and this is Prime Minister Billy Hughes, second on the left, visiting Adelaide. <clears throat> the Great Air Race. It's a lot to read, so I'm just giving you guys time to read it. There you go. This is an amazing. It's just so massive. It's a big plane. No yeah. Way. Like I'm five nine, and if I stood there, I reckon my nose would be touching. Oh, I don't know. We've got to remember that it is raised up a bit as well. So. Well, those props are over eight foot long. Yeah. Both. both um, the length of the blade so um, yeah it's a big plane how thick are the blades oh I'm not sure if I can tell they do look pretty actually I'll go around the other side I'll go back down the other side Probably a good inch. Oh, yeah. Probably thicker at the stem, but I'll see if I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd say yeah, two to three inches maybe. But, but, the rope. but considering they're about eight feet tall. Yeah, it looks like it was in pieces, you can tell there that they actually put the uh, props together in pieces. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, now I did read something about that. I assume that's just used to power hydraulics or something. Yeah, I think that was used to power uh, electric, oh, the electrical systems. Yeah. yeah, so here's, here's a little fun fact. You got a real big propeller there and to power hydraulics I'm just a baby <laughs> there's one on the other side there was just a little one as well I assume that's it's the uh the pre historic version of a ram head turbine you'd see on a uh on like a a350 or an a380 if, if you lose um if you lose a power uh, electrical power from the engines your hydraulic power yeah you just load the wrap and it will the airflow will spin it and it'll produce a uh, Power. Yeah. Power, so. Now I don't know what this big thing at the front was. Was that some kind of uh, prevent prevention of the nose hitting the ground, like a sled of some kind, maybe? It looks like a giant hockey stick. <laughs> Does this thing have an afterburner? Probably. <laughs> well, what we can't tell you is this is actually the. Uh, 2025 model bomber. It's just in incognito. There you go. Very mechanical, very 
Yeah. Uh, system, advanced pipeline designs, uh, plenty of lift <laughs> with these things made. Rolls Royce engines on it. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't propel it, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. There you go. Sorry. No, no, you're all right. Good. You're all good. Absolutely amazing aircraft. Definitely worth, um, if you've ever been down at the airport, you've got a half hour to kill. I highly recommend it. It's, yeah. it's, it's a really impressive little um, display. And that really gets you, gives you a sense of uh, how yeah. pioneering it was back in those days. You know? uh, how many cylinders are the engines? No, oh, they're, V12s. Uh, they're V12s. Two uh, V12 Rolls-Royce, yeah. about 350 uh, horsepower each. Yeah. yeah. Um, can uh, get it up to about 100 miles an hour. Um, 100, yeah, 100 miles an hour V12. Pretty cool. Yeah. Not a quick, not a quick one. <laughs> no, that's it. Uh, obviously required to be hand cranked too, by the looks of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I was just saying before. Do you know what the big hockey stick at the front was for? Well, I imagine it's some sort of uh, a nose the, protector yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. yeah like you would normally use a nose wheel. It's not, oh yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's the inside steering wheel, some kind of pedal. It must be because there's no rear wheel. I don't think there is a rear wheel, there's a rear steer. Yeah, there's like a skid. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's, 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 it's a tail dragger, kind of. Yeah, oh, it's definitely a tail dragger. It's not yeah. Would have been so fast for the time. 360 horsepower each. There we go. So just walking down here, there's another, another mirror. Which you can see up there, looking into the wing. Which is very cool. All right. You can actually see on the side of the engines, on the inner side, of the, uh, I believe it's an air speed indicator and a uh, RPM gauge. An air speed indicator? On the inner side of the engines. Oh, yeah. On both sides, so it's not going to work there. We've got some kind of gauges there so they can so see the temperature and something or other. They're also, just looking back into the cockpit there, you can see some of the inner workings on the side of the wall there. There's not much in there. No. <laughs> Very basic. Uh, oil and temperature gauges, Miles is saying. Oh, well. That would make sense. Well, one of them's an RPM gauge. You can see RPM on it. Yeah. The top one looks like an ASI. Yeah. Well, there you go, a nice look at the little, well, not so little, Vickers Vimy. <laughs> oh, wait, you can actually see the video uh, tube running up the top there. Those two little uh, holes sticking out up yeah, the top yeah. of the cockpit. Very physical, physical as video uh, tube, so. Oh, yeah. That's for your airspeed. The fuel lines coming down the spars there. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Absolutely amazing. Does it have autopilot? <laughs> yeah, this had autopilot. It was called a pilot. Uh, Lander says, please pardon my yank ignorance. Is this the aircraft flown by the Smith, Shear and Bennett? Yes, it is. This is the actual aircraft itself. It's on display. Uh, permanently at Adelaide Airport. This is the the original. Uh, Pops and Mark, burning question: Autobot or Decepticon?
It's just amazing to look at. It's just, just mesmerizing for its age, over a hundred years old. Autobots roll out. Front skid is to stop the nose into the ground on muddy, unprepared runways in Europe and Asia. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly what uh, exactly what aircraft expedition says. You know, we can have a bit of fun, but this is some serious history right here. It's it's just just amazing that they're able to restore it and and keep it in such good condition. So there you go. We'll take you for a quick walk outside, show you exactly where it is again, and then we'll start wrapping up. Big thank you to everyone who has uh, been joining us today. It's been our pleasure to show you the original Vickers Vimy here at Adelaide Airport. Speed, uh, Landis, here you go. Mechanic James Bennett. Mechanic Walter Shears. Navigator Sir Keith Smith. Pilot Sir Ross Smith. And a man with his face covered up, which could have been Sir Ross Smith as well. This gives you a pretty good idea, Pete, of the actual route they took. Yeah. Um, and I just had a comment here, I, I missed it quickly. Um, Miles High says, does Mitch have tan legs or is it just the light? <laughs> They're probably tan. So you see where they started in England. And they basically didn't technically fly over too much open water. They basically kept it over land just in case. It's a bit hard to read here, but because of the... Eleven and a half thousand miles, 135 hours flight time, 27 days. Uh, that's another map. That's when uh, the NT and uh, SA were connected. Yeah. You still be one state. Day 24. And there's Australia. If you don't know where we are, we are right there, Adelaide. There you go. Well, gents, what do you think? Fantastic. Pretty uh, cool. Awesome. Uh, I, I think it's really impressive what they've done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic display. Definitely worth um, yeah, we'll taking half an hour of your time at the airport to come check it out. You won't be uh, upset. It's uh, really impressive. Yeah. Don't worry. If you've got bad legs like me, they do have some seating in here. You can come sit down. But highly recommend coming down here, as uh, Kim said, to Adelaide Airport. Come see the Vickers Vimy. There you are. All right, we're going to depart Vickers now. We'll head back out. Miles High, impressive. I love you Share this. Please do more shows like this. Well, we might have to go back to uh, the Haas Museum over in Sydney. Yeah. And do that one. Or we could do the Port Adelaide uh, Aviation Museum. Back to you need to get a 360 camera and go through it. Yeah. That is a good one. Yeah. That's a great idea. All right, one of the photos on the wall here. Of the four gentlemen. There you go. All right. Let's head out. 
and we'll wrap up. Goodbye, Vickers. <laughs> One person segment. Only one person at a time. Alright, we're out. Do we want to go for a quick walk into the terminal and show you people what Adelaide Airport's like? Do you have time, Kimmy? Oh, Quickly? Not really. Not really. No, I better get going. Alright. Unfortunately, I've got to go to work. We'll save that for another video. I've got to go to work as well. I start at midday. I've still got a bit of time, but a few things I need to do. But uh, from all of us, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for the tour. Thanks for coming along with us. And uh, we'll see you on the next stream. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye.